In this video, I'm going to take a look at these rather complicated looking molecules, which are known as triglycerides. And we'll try and break it down so that it's not as complicated as it actually looks at first glance. So the first thing to point out is this is actually an ester. So hopefully you can see there's an ester group there. There's an ester group there. And there's an ester group there. Because there are three ester groups in this molecule, it's called a triester. Now, the backbone of this ester is an alcohol. It's actually been made from an alcohol. So I'm just going to pull it apart a little bit and expose the alcohol. So we'll turn that into an alcohol. So we need an OH on there. OH on there, and an OH on there. So, we've got this alcohol with three OH groups on, called propane 1,2,3-triol. Now, that doesn't sound anything like triglyceride, does it? But its old name is glycerol, which does sound, you can see the connection there. So triglycerides are esters of glycerol. So if triglycerides are esters of glycerol, then how do you make an ester? You make an ester with an alcohol, well there's the alcohol there, and a carboxylic acid. So a moment ago I pulled those long hydrocarbon chains off the triglyceride and what I've done is I've turned one of them there's the other two there I've turned one of them into a carboxylic acid to show you how the esters formed so how do you make an ester you take a carboxylic acid and an alcohol you take a water molecule out and then join the bits together there's one of our three ester bonds formed there. So I need to do the same here and the same here. The thing I want to point out at this moment is this carboxylic acid is known as a fatty acid. So you can see I've made the triglyceride back now and I've written up on the board there. So triglycerides are made from glycerol and fatty acids. I'm going to lose this now because it's, it just looks such a mess and we're going to start using the chemical formulae for them. So where do we get triglycerides from? Well, these molecules occur in nature in animal and vegetable fats. And what the body does is it breaks them down into these fatty acid molecules. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at these fatty acid molecules in some more detail. So the first thing I want to say here is that fatty acids can be saturated, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. So we're going to deal with each of those in turn and have a look at the structure of the fatty acid. So we'll start with saturated fatty acids. And if you remember from AS, saturated means there are only carbon-carbon single bonds in the molecule. So we've got this long carboxylic acid with carbon-carbon single bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is called dodecanoic acid. So 12 carbons is dodec, dodecanoic acid. So you can see I've written up as well, it has a, a shorthand formula. So the shorthand formula for dodecanoic acid is 12 colon 0. So the 12 obviously refers to the number of carbon atoms in the carbon chain. And the 0 refers to the number of double bonds. So obviously because this is a saturated fatty acid, it has no double bonds, carbon-carbon double bonds, sorry. So therefore we have a 0 there. So we'll look at a monounsaturated fatty acid now. 
we've got this lovely looking molecule here. It's called octadec 9 enoic acid. It's monounsaturated because it has one carbon-carbon double bond. And you can see that this is at carbon number 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The octadec means there are 18 carbons in the chain. And you can see there's the shorthand. So the 18, the, the number at the start, remember, is the number of carbons in the chain. So we've got 18 colon 1, 1 double bond, 1 carbon-carbon double bond. And the bracketed number now obviously indicates where that double bond is. So it's at carbon number 9. Octadec 9 enoic acid. Now you'll notice that I've drawn it in the, the cis form. And that's because, remember these molecules occur in nature. And in nature, it's always the cis form that predominates. You don't tend to get the trans form in nature. Just the cis. Now we'll come on to trans fatty acids later on in the video. But just to remember that the cis form is the one that occurs in nature. Remember this is a type of stereoisomerism. You could also re refer to this as the Z form. But we're going to call this a, the cis form because cis trans isomerism can be used when you have a hydrogen and a non-hydrogen group on each of the carbons in the carbon-carbon double bond. And the only other thing I want to say about this fatty acid is that it occurs in olive oil. So you can derive octadec 9 enoic acid or oleic acid it's also known as from olive oil. I'm going to use this polyunsaturated fatty acid to explain um, a, an industrial process that's done on a massive scale. You'll notice that we've got the cis form of the isomer and that's because this fatty acid will come from a natural substance so it's most likely to be some form of natural oil. But the fact that it isn't oil causes a problem because how can you spread that on your toast? So what the industry does is it converts some of those carbon-carbon double bonds, some of them it will convert into carbon-carbon single bonds and it will make it less unsaturated and more saturated. And what that does is it will raise the melting point and so instead of it being an oil it's going to be a solid and so therefore you can spread it on your toast. So what we're doing is we're carrying out the partial hydrogenation of this unsaturated fatty acid. Now we study hydrogenation of ethene at AS and that's carried out at 150 degrees C and uses a nickel catalyst. And essentially we're doing the same reaction so the conditions are the same. Now I'm going to use 4 moles of hydrogen so I don't want to fully hydrogenate it so I'm going to leave one of the double bonds intact. So I've partially hydrogenated this fatty acid. I've added four moles of hydrogen. So I've lost four of the double bonds. You can see I've lost these four here. But can you see what happened to this double bond? Hydrogenation produces trans isomers. So instead of the two hydrogens being on the same side of the double bond, we've now got hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. So this is what we call a trans fat. Now a lot of research has been done recently on trans fats and scientists have found out that they are linked to heart disease. And what they do is they think that they raise levels of bad cholesterol or LDL levels. So increased trans fats in your diet is not a good thing. 
So you'll notice on a lot of labeling now, the companies are very keen to put people's mind at rest. And if it says contains no hydrogenated fats, what the company is saying is, we haven't carried out this process, so therefore there won't be any trans fats in our product. The next industrial reaction I want to look at of triglycerides is known as saponification. So that just means soap making. So you can see written up there, soaps are the sodium salts of esters and they are made by the alkaline hydrolysis of esters. So we'll look at the link with triglycerides now. So I've drawn up a triglyceride on the board there and I've used the sort of abbreviated formula here to avoid having to draw all the CH2 groups out. But hopefully you can appreciate that this is going to be a saturated fatty acid within each of those chains. So this is derived from an animal fat. So if we reflux this triglyceride with three moles of aqueous sodium hydroxide, then we're going to get the alkaline hydrolysis reaction taking place, whereby we're going to break this ester bond. And of course, we need three moles of sodium hydroxide because there are three ester bonds to break. So essentially, we're going to split this triglyceride up and produce three identical sodium salts, and we're going to make glycerol. So I've managed to squeeze the products at the bottom corner here. So here's the glycerol, and here are the three moles of the sodium salt of the ester, and that would be used as the soap. The final industrial application of triglycerides is to do with biodiesel. So you've got written up on the board there, biodiesel is the methyl or ethyl ester of a triglyceride. So I've used a generic representation of a triglyceride here. So I've got the, the glycerol part here and then the ester bit here. So I've got three different R groups which would be typical in a natural molecule. And I'm saying here that we would get this triglyceride from used cooking oil. So to make an ethyl ester, I'm going to react the triglyceride with ethanol. You can see the reactions carried out with a sodium hydroxide catalyst. And essentially what have we done? We've broken the ester bond. So we've hydrolyzed the triglyceride and we have formed glycerol and we've also formed three moles, three molecules of ester. So we've got the R1, C double bond O, and then that's combined with the CH3, CH2, O part of the ethanol. And we've got this ester here. The R2 would form a slightly different ester, then the R3 group would form a slightly different ester again. Obviously, if these were identical chains, you'd get three identical esters formed. So these esters here, these are the ethyl esters of this triglyceride. This is the biodiesel. So this will be blended with regular diesel and put into vehicles, and they can run perfectly well on that. If you think, why do they use ethanol or methanol? These two alcohols are fairly easy to produce. If you think about ethanol, you can make that via fermentation of sugars, so you could harvest some crops that could be then fermented into ethanol and then use it in the process. So it's kind of got some environmental um, benefits to it. So it's a renewable process, if you like. The process is known as transesterification. So if we think about why that's the case, we start out with a triglyceride, which is an ester. You see the ester bonds there. And we turn that into a different ester. In this case, three different esters. So essentially, we're transforming one ester into another ester. And so it's called transesterification. 